Welcome again to another CSEC chemistry exam preparation series. And today we are going to use a titration question to develop our skills in using the mole concept. This should be exciting. Here is our examination question. We're told that there's an experiment that is being carried out to determine the percentage of iron in an iron sample. So 0 0.5 gram sample of the iron salt. So, so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an iron salt placed in a conical flask and 25 mils of dilute sulfuric acid was added. And this is really just to acidify the solution and to ensure that the iron remains in a particular oxidation state. 10 mils of phosphoric acid is added, eight drops of indicator, and that solution is titrated against 0 0.02 moles per dm cube um, of potassium dichromate until we get an, an endpoint that of course we can see. And the ionic equation is given. So from the ionic equation, we can look at that equation. Dichromate, Cr2O7, two minus ions, plus six Fe2 plus, plus 14H plus, that's the acid that was added to acidify. And that gave um, six Fe3 plus, so we can look and see how the oxidation numbers are changing. Look and see the mole ratios being used, plus two Cr3 plus, plus 7H2O to, of course, balance the, the H plus on the left-hand side. All right, so just, we're going to get back to that equation in a minute, but we're asked, first of all, to list apparatus that would be necessary to carry out the experiment. So as we said, this is an example of a titration reaction, yes? So what do we normally um, use when we're carrying out a titration? What's, what's, what's the usual apparatus? Well, certainly we need burette, yes. We need a pipette. We need our conical flask, as mentioned in the question. We have to weigh out the, the, the iron salt. So we need a balance and probably possibly a weighing bottle, right? So so if you can think of any more, you know, any other apparatus necessary, then of course you, you, you can add that. Now we're also given the burette readings, initial and final volumes for each titration that was done, right? Remember we're titrating the iron two solution against um, potassium dichromate solution. So here our task is to read the volume, right? On the burette, the burette readings, right? So um, just a caution when we're reading burette readings, what do we normally do? Well, certainly we have to identify the meniscus because we're, we are to take volume readings at the bottom of the meniscus. So if we should point to where the meniscus is, the, that curved line, we're to take our readings at the bottom of the meniscus. So if we were doing that and we were taking our readings, so for titration one, we would see that the, the initial volume is around two. Yes, that's a just sitting on 2.00 and the final volume I am estimating to be 21.95. So it's just about in between 21.9 and 22. So you, so you have to do some estimations for that um, second decimal place. Likewise, for the second titration, we will get values that's around um, 1.85 and 21.86. And for the third, it's sitting right at um, 1.5 for the initial volume and about 19.5 for the third value. And of course, we would now um, subtract these, subtract the initial from the final to get the actual volume of solution used. And we can work that out to give those values. Great.
Now we're to use the information, right? So all our volume measurements and notice we, do, we have just um, carried them over. And we're to put an asterisk to indicate which values we will use to obtain the average. Now, generally when we do titrations, we're reminded to use the values that are closest. So the closest tighter values, that's what we would average. So notice we have 19.95 as a volume in the first titration, 20.01 in the second, and the third, the value is 18.00. So that's a difference of almost two, two mils. So certainly we wouldn't just average all three, we would take the two closest readings. And if we do that, then our average volume works out to be 19.98 centimeters cube or milliliters. In this section, we're to use that information, so the average volume that we just um, calculated, and we're going to use that to calculate the average number of moles of potassium dichromate in the experiment. So from the first section, we were told that the concentration of our dichromate is 0 0.02 moles per dm cube. So if we had 1,000 milliliters or 1 dm cube, we would have 0 0.02 moles of potassium dichromate. In the titration, from the average um, volume used, we only use 19.98 centimeters cube. So we're just reasoning out how to work out the number of moles, right? I know some students may know, just plug it into the formula. I prefer to reason it out. If 0 0.02 moles are in a thousand cm cube, then how many moles are in 19.98 cm cube, which is the actual volume that we use in the titration. And if we do and the math on that, right? Cross multiply, find X, that would work out to give me 3.996 times 10 to the minus 4 moles. Notice I have not rounded this off too much because we're going to be using this value later on in the in, in other calculations. So don't be too, 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 too quick to round off. Try to use about 3 or, or 2 significant figures to, um, if you're going to be doing further calculations. All right, so from that number of moles of dichromate, we were shown the equation earlier, which showed that the mole ratio, and that that's the equation. So if we look at the equation, dichromate to Fe2+, plus, the mo what's, the, what's the mole ratio there? So for each dichromate, each mole of dichromate, we need six moles of iron 2. So if we know the number of moles of dichromate, obviously using that same ratio, we can work out the number of moles of iron, which would be six times that. So six times 3.996 times 10 to the minus four would give us 2.397 times 10 to the minus three moles of iron two. Again, we're not too quick to round off because we're gonna use that in further calculations. Certainly based on the calculation that we just did, using the mole ratio of one to six, we would have calculated that the number of moles of iron is 2.4 times 10 to the minus three moles, right? So that is the number of moles that would have been coming from the 0 0.5 gram iron salt, right? And then to calculate the mass of iron in the sample, that will simply just be the number of moles times the molar mass of iron that's given in the question at 55.8. So we just multiply the number of moles by the molar mass. And that would give us 0 0.134 grams of iron. So although we had a 0.5 gram iron salt sample, because of course the iron is combined with other things, only 0 0.134 grams of iron right would be um used there in this part of the question we're to have the percentage of iron in the iron soil sample so as we were discussing earlier 0.134 grams is coming from the iron so the rest of it in that 0.5 sample would be from you know other components so we took find the percentage of iron how do we find percentage again 
yes oh yes simply the mass of the iron divided by the total mass of the salt which is 0.5 and we times 100 to convert it to percentage and that will work out to be 26.8 percent of iron in the iron salt sample now we are looking at this reaction between iron and dichromate and we're reminded here that it's a redox reaction right so we're now asked to define the term reduction in terms of electrons so remember there are many ways to define oxidation and reduction in terms of electrons reduction refers to gain of electrons great and what do we normally um, say generally that the substance that is acting as a reducing agent will become oxidized so in this reaction fe2 plus is acting as a reducing agent so the reducing agent causes the substance to be reduced and is oxidized during the process now we are to calculate the oxidation state of chromium in the dichromate ion so notice the dichromate ion when we're checking for oxidation states in ions we are reminded that the sum of the oxidation states in an ion must be equal to the charge on the ion so when i add them up all the different oxidation states it must be equal to the charge on the ion what's the charge on that dichromate ion that charge is minus two so all the oxidation states in that ion must add up to give me minus two so we know chromium we're, we're checking for the oxidation state the oxidation state of chromium which we don't know so we'll call that x usually oxygen is usually minus two or two minus um so if we say two times x which is a chromium which we don't know plus seven times minus two for because there are seven um oxide ions and each of them is minus two all of that must add up to give me minus two which is a charge on the ion and if we do that math we would have 2x minus 14 is equal to minus 2 solve for x as a simple equation we would get x to be equal to plus 6 so we're saying the oxidation state of the chromium in dichromate in the cr207 the chromium is um, a plus 6 is in a plus 6 oxidation um, state one precaution to be taken when carrying out this experiment certainly we want to ensure that in our titration and um, we rinse the tip of our beer that's one precaution with distilled water yes and of course we want to make sure our readings are taken volume measurements are taken at eye level great so that's all for this session Remember to check out other videos from the Individualized Science Learning Center and like and subscribe and email us, of course, for more information. Good luck.